Hello, hello, this is Clover132, bringing you guys a bit of a prelude to our Fallout 3 role-playing playthrough. During this prelude, I will be showing you guys the mods that I will be installing into the game, as I install them, as a matter of fact. And you guys, if you would like, you can follow along and install the mods as I do. So, in a way, this will basically be a instructional setting set up to modding Fallout 3 to the way that I think honestly makes it a lot more realistic and a lot more interesting and harder for me as well because as we all know Fallout 3 is it's a pretty you know mainly a run and gun game you could beat the storyline in about several hours if you run straight through it even as a, you could finish the storyline as a level 5 out of the 30 levels that are naturally in the game so to start off we're, I'm going to go ahead and let you all know, I am, as you can see, I'm playing the Game of the Year Edition. So that means that I have all of the DLC, The Pit, Broken Steel, Operation Anchorage, Point Lookout, and Mothership Zeta. I have all the DLC are installed, everything. So this mod instructional videos will pertain to you guys having all five of the DLC downloaded and installed onto your game. So if you do not have all the DLC, you will need to change the mod installation in a separate way than I do. You'll have to do it a little bit differently, because some mods, they have patches for all of the DLC, so you'll have to not use certain patches. Because if you don't have Mothership Zeta and you install the Mothership Zeta patch for it, there's going to be a problem, because it'll be looking for files that won't be there. So... In this first episode, we will basically set up Fallout 3 to where it'll be mostly ready to mod and also allow it to run just a little bit better, so we do a little bit of basic performance in performance boosting. So the first thing that is required by pretty much every single mod made for Fallout is this, the Fallout Script Extender. So what this will do, this expands the capabilities of Fallout 3, as it says right there, and allows a lot, uh, pretty much every single mod that is made for it to actually work. Not all of them do, but I pretty much have yet to see one that doesn't need it. So, to start off, what you'll want to do is you'll just hit download right here. The 1 to beta 2.7, or beta 2, that's 7-zip, my bad. So you'll want the one, version 1 to beta 2, and you'll go ahead and just save that. You save that wherever you want me. I save it personally directly to my downloads folder, which I need to pull up here. Downloads. Here we are. Downloads. And I actually don't need that. I have Notepad++ installed. You guys will see that in a minute. And so, when you, once you download that, you will get this folder right here. The FOSE version 1.2 beta 2. Now, I have both WinRAR and 7-zip installed, and so, but my default is set to WinRAR. So all you need to do is right click and extract that. I will put a link below to where you can download WinRAR as well if you uh, don't already have it installed. And you'll, all you'll need to do is just install it the same way you would install any other regular program. So we'll extract the files. Say OK. So then we get this folder here which has all of this in here and the only things that we need are these DLL files so you can either click and drag and select everything or if you don't know or if you want you can click the first one hold shift and left click to get that one and then you, to get all of those selected then you need the editors both of them and the FOSE loader so you can just hold control and left click each of these and then what we need to do is copy these files these are the essential files that are needed to make the mod work so, so right-click copy or control C if that is your uh, preference to do so. And now we need to go to our primary, our, uh, not primary, our Fallout installation. So for me that is C, Program Files x86, uh, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 3, GOTY. And so this will be the folder that has your Fallout 3 executable file and your launcher. And what you all you need to do is right click and hit paste or control V again if that is your choice to do. So I'll show you guys how 
to, uh, for those of us that use Steam, how to make it to where you can run the game with Fallout Script Extender just by hitting play right here. I'm going to do that first, and then we will test to see, to make sure FOSE Loader has installed correctly. So, this, again, this applies only to those of you who have uh, Steam and are using the Steam version of the game. If you do not have Steam, this does not apply to you. Do not do this. So you want to rename your Fallout Launcher, and then just put a dash and type ORIG for original. And then we want to take the FOSE loader and right-click copy it, and just, again, right-click paste it right here so you have a copy. And then rename this. You can F2 or right-click rename. And then type in Fallout Launcher, no spaces, exactly as your original file was, and then just hit enter. And then at this point, now you can just run Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition from your Steam client, or by going to Start and Steam and doing that, by clicking there. If you do not have Steam, what you will want to do, or if you do have Steam and you prefer running your games on icons, you'll want to right click and go to Send To, and go Desktop to create a shortcut. And so then you'll right click your shortcut, and we'll just rename that to your, to FOSE, yeah not Fallout, just FOSE. Right click, go to Properties, and then we'll want to change the icon, and then we'll want to Browse, and if you have it installed on Steam, you want to go to Steam, uh, Steam app, no not Steam, hmm. maybe I don't know where this is, huh, graphics, maybe? nope, okay, I'm not sure exactly where, but, what you can, oh, Steam, Steam, okay, yeah, Steam, Steam, then go to Games, and then here's a list of icons that you can choose to use. Me, uh, for just for this purpose, we'll say we'll use this one right here. The default Fallout 3 launcher icon. And then we'll just hit apply. And OK, and there you go. You have a direct link that will start Fallout Script Extender and run straight into Fallout 3. But me, I don't need that, so I'm deleting it. I run everything through my Steam client. So now we will go ahead and test to make sure FOSE has installed correctly. So all you need to do is go ahead and run your game. And once it loads up, I will be back in just a minute. All right, here we are. Yep, I forgot to change my screenshot. Oh, well, so I just took a screenshot of this menu. But anyways, so what you'll need to do is load up your game. And once it's to this point right here where you are in the main menu of the game, what you'll want to do is just hit the tilde key, that is the key next to the 1, and then type in get FOSE version, and then just hit enter. As long as you get FOSE version 1, you have correctly installed Fallout Script Extender. If it, you do not get this, go back and retry it again, clear out anything you've done, and try it again and if you don't get it then, go ahead and send me a link, or send me, not a link, but uh, send me a message and I will see what I can do for you and see if I can figure out what your problem is with it. So that is a Fallout Script Extender, so at this point we can just go ahead and quit out of the game. Now that we have Fallout Script Extender installed, the next file we are going to need is Archive Invalidation Invalidated. This, again, is another mod that most things require it to be installed. So far, I haven't really seen anything that doesn't require it, so we're, we need it. So what you want to go to is this link right here, which I will be putting again in the description. It will be down there. And then click on Files, and then right here, Program Version Recommended, version 1.0.6. Now we have a download with manager button, but we're not going to touch that just yet. I will show that to you all later with a uh, Nexus mod manager, which will be in the next video, I believe. So we don't want to click this button. For now, click download manually. And then wait for it to load up, and then just pick a server. It really doesn't matter which one. So your file will be prepared, and then you should get the save file 
something at some point. Come on. Huh. Let me retry it. That's being weird. Hmm. Usually it doesn't take that long. Let me just retry it here. Should get... I already have it downloaded, so really this kind of doesn't matter, but, to me. But you'll basically get the same thing as though when you download Fallout Script Extender, it's saying, would you like to download it, and where you want to save it. So just save it where you choose to. Again, I have it saved in my Downloads folder. So I have it right here, Program Version Recommended 944. And once again, we will extract the files. And this one can take just a second longer than FOSE did, but that's okay. So I don't need that up anymore. Let's see. So we've extracted this, so we have two files in here, the README and the Archive and Validation and Validated. Now the README, it kind of gives you a general overview of what it does, and also it warns you that if you have Vista, again, if you have Windows Vista as an operating system, if you have your Fallout 3 game installed into your program files, this can cause an issue installing this there. I have Windows 7, and I haven't noticed anything wrong. It gives me a little message warning me that it could be... Oh, well, there's the file. That, there, there's a thing that comes up for when you're trying to save that. So I'm just going to hit cancel. But, uh... So I have Windows 7, and I haven't noticed this cause any issues with my game. So if you have Vista, you should reinstall your Fallout somewhere totally different, not in your program files. For me, it's in there, and it doesn't seem to have any problems, so I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to go back into the installation folder, just as a, just for future notice, we will be coming here a lot in the future. This is something that is a pretty useful thing, you need to know where this is, because we'll have to come here occasionally to check on things. So just right-click, paste the archive and validation invalidated right there, and then just double click it and if you get this do you wish to allow just say yes and then yeah as it says is installed in my programs folder this may cause it to behave strangely I haven't seen anything happen with it being here but then again I have Windows 7 so that may be what the thing is that doesn't affect and so then just hit activate and once you see archive and validation invalidated has been activated we can just hit exit and now we're done with that but we need to leave it in there I think you need to leave it in there. I'm going to. And that is all for the archive and validation. And now we are actually done downloading files directly to install this. We do have one more thing that you guys need to download. I already have downloaded and installed. So we need to go to this. This is to get a thing called the CFF Explorer, which is going to allow us to edit our Fallout executable file to run at more than just a 2 gigabyte address awareness. So all you need to do is just choose one of these and it'll do the downloads should start automatically and again the link to this will be in the description below and then all you'll want to do is just hit the save file and then run it and install it as you would any other program. So then at this point once you have it installed you want to run this as an administrator so right click run as CFF Explorer as an administrator this is to give it the privilege to actually change it if it's in your program files like it is for me. So then file open and now you'll want to again locate your Fallout 3 directory same thing we've been going to for a while now and left click on your Fallout 3 application should be around 15,000 kilobytes and then just hit the open and now you'll see over here on the left a bunch of stuff that we don't know and we don't want to mess with except for this one we want to play with the file header. The rest of this, no touchy. No touchy this stuff, touch the file header. And under characteristics, we will click right here where it says to click here. We will do this. As you see right here, this segment right there, app can handle greater than 2 gigabyte address space. You want to select that. Now right here, if we have a 64-bit machine, this does say 32-bit word machine. I'm not sure if you can, if unchecking that will cause a problem. I will test that on my own and let you guys know in the next video or sometime in the future. I will let you know whether or not it is okay to take that off and to see whether or not it might actually improve it if you have a 64-bit. Not sure, but I will test that out in the future. But for now, leave that checked unless you already know. Which, I'm assuming, if you're watching this video, 
you probably don't know whether or not that's okay to do if you're actually watching an instructional video for this. So then just hit OK and then save this. Overwrite the original, yes. Close that, we are done with the CFF Explorer. And so the final thing we need to do is edit our Fallout game to fix any multi-core issue. If you have more than just a one-core computer, which, so dual-core, quad-core, anything above. So anything above one core, you need to do this because it causes some problems later on down the road if you don't. So you'll want to go to Documents, My Games, Fallout 3, right here, your Fallout 3, any file is what we are looking for. Now, for some reason, I have an issue opening it with Notepad++ and opening it with Notepad directly from here. So what I need to do is I have to open, run Notepad as an administrator, and then go to Open, and change the thing to All Files, right there. Select Fallout, Configuration Settings File, and just click Open. So that'll load up this. This hurts me to see this, because uh, me as a programmer, I'm used to organized files. This is all kind of mashed together and blah to me. So the file we are looking for, you want to hit Control F and search for B Use Threaded AI. And I will have, down in the description, I will have everything that we do right here typed out to where if you do not understand what I'm saying, you can just go down there and find it right there. And so we'll change the zero to one. This enables it to use more than just one thread. And then we need to hit enter and type in I num H W threads equals two. Now I know it, it kind of doesn't make sense. I've got quad core computer yet. I'm only setting it to use two threads. For some reason, if you put it over two, it causes issues. And if it's just one and you have a multi-core computer, it causes issues then. So two seems to be the sweet spot of Fallout 3 that works beautifully when you have more than one core. So then file, save it, and we are done editing this. And now at this point, we officially have Fallout 3 ready and set to go for our modding with a couple basic performance enhancements for certain computers. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and we will carry on in the next episode to installing the Nexus Mod Manager, and I will go over what exactly that is. And also, we'll probably do a couple more uh, performance-enhancing mods, or we may just go straight into the beginning of the big game-changing mods, like uh, Fallout Wanderers Edition and the Mart's Mutant mod. So... Hopefully, you guys have learned how to do at least the basic setup for Fallout 3 to enable it to be modded, and hopefully you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please leave a like, make a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you have already subscribed, I really appreciate your support in watching the videos, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will uh, definitely reply to them as soon as I possibly can. So everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye.